Welcome to a brand new episode of CNB. I'm Siddharth Vinayak Patankar. This is the brand new fourth generation of the Mercedes-Benz GLE. Yes, it's been a long time coming and we covered the car on the show months ago. So why do I have it here? Well, that's because it's just arrived into the market. But this is not the big hot news or the main story, let's say, on our show today. We have a massive exclusive for you and this is the first look at the new generation of the A-Class but with a massive twist on it. Yes, the word massive becomes important because it has the most powerful engine of any hatch on the planet. This is our exclusive with the A45S. Wolf in sheep's clothing. Hmm, there was a time you may have been inclined to call this model that. anymore. Yes sir, this is a wolf. Period. Snarling, menacing and ready to pounce. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the smolderingly hottest hatch, the most powerful one in production on Mother Earth, this is the Mercedes AMG A45S. So I mentioned S because the A45 comes in two avatars. There is the Mercedes AMG A45 and you guessed it, the A45S. That suffix gives you 33 bhp more, everything standard, and that includes 19, not 18 inch wheels, bigger brakes and bigger pipes at the back, more drive modes and a more edgy, sporty and menacing styling package. But we'll get to its startling specs in a bit. First off, this builds off the new generation of the Mercedes-Benz A-Class and that is really where the similarity ends. AMG has given the car such a major do-over that compared to the previous generation, this is not simply a performance variant of the A-Class, but a whole different beast. It's wider, has differing body panels and kit, and is a whole lot more powerful, of course. Looks-wise, the aggressive snout with a vertical fin grille, the flared bumper and wheel arches, and slimmer, meaner looking headlamps fit in perfectly with the car's stance, and its proportions. The hood is also different to the A-Class or even the A35 variant with two aggressive creases and a more pronounced heft. At the sides, the wheels dominate its presence while at the rear, the LED tail lights are distinct and definitely very different to the previous gens. Now on most AMG models, it's been pretty much the same thing, which means taking a stock car from the Mercedes-Benz portfolio and then adding those little visual elements to imply that it's AMG, that it is more powerful and racier. So, you know, different kind of bumper, grill, side skirts, things like that. On this one though, on the A45, the extra effort that has been put in really shows up in styling terms as well. The car is very different to the regular A-Class, even though at first glance you might not think so much wider fenders up front and it makes the whole car wider because they stick out a lot more. It gives you that nice prowling, growling sort of stance which is important for a car like this. It implies its potency. Also doing that is the hood. Now again you may not think it's different but it's a carryover from the CLA and so you've got the power dome effect makes it look more muscular. Now those AMG tricks of course are also here which means you get the AMG front grille with the big logo and the vertical elements. So different, much sportier bumper as well though you've got the uh, regular headlamp with the daytime running light and the wheels. Well you've got two options, 18 or 19 inch though on the A45, 19s just make more sense. And another last little element, well it's badging on the side which tells you something else that's exclusive to AMG, 4Matic Plus.
The cabin is equally sporty and aggressive and reeks of AMG treatment through and through. I am certainly not complaining. The added yellow highlights to complement the sun yellow paintwork are especially nice. Yep, elements on the steering and in the seat pattern and of course the yellow stitching all around. But really, it is what is under the hood that counts. This is the updated version of AMG's award-winning four-cylinder engine. And in its latest iteration, and with the S spec, it is now the most powerful four-cylinder engine in the world. Yes, eat your heart out, because I get to take it out on the road. The hills around Stuttgart are now dotted with a lot of vineyards. They're gaining in popularity. It looks really all nice and pretty. But the good part is that the hills also provide you with some nice twisty roads to be able to get cars like this out onto them and have some fun. Now, with the new generation of the Mercedes-Benz A-Class, the whole focus was to make the car even more fun, more driver-oriented. And so, you better believe it, AMG had a greater role to play in the development of the new generation to begin with. Now throw in the fact that the new A45 from the ground up is an all-new car with an all-new engine and the whole focus starts to change even more. So, the promise of performance, you bet. Why am I talking about it? I have no idea. I need to jump behind the wheel and check it out for myself. Okay. The car is fast, no, make that very fast, but then you knew it would be. The AMG A-Class comes in three variants in differing states of tune of the new M139 inline four-cylinder engine. And while they're all fast, I'm happy to have the fastest. So in terms of capability and performance, you can say in many ways that the A35 now mimics what the last generation of the A45 used to do. And that's not just in dynamic terms, but also in terms of the kind of output you get from the engine. And so that's where the difference lies in bringing in a brand new engine, one that's been developed in-house at AMG. Conventional thinking suggested the need for twin turbos or even a supercharger plus turbo combo to achieve astonishing power levels like this for a four-cylinder. But AMG has surprised many by making the single turbo two-liter pump out a massive 415 horses. And all of that magic happens in Afaltabak, where AMG hand builds each and every one of its engines. And yeah, that is where I was driving to, folks. And you'll soon see why. AMG, three very special alphabets that straight away get your pulse to quicken just that little extra bit. And I am in Afaltabak, the headquarters for AMG where all the magic has always happened. Now, the focus at AMG has always remained performance. It is still that, but the thing that's changed now is the approach towards that performance. It is trying to get a little bit more modern, a little more technological, a little bit more efficient. And yes, that means combining the expertise of the engineer with industry 4.0 methods. Yes, it felt good to see our flag specially put up just to welcome me. And right after Republic Day, that sure feels extra special. But even more special things are happening inside. At the heart of every AMG car, undoubtedly, is that AMG engine. Now that's the part here that makes everything so much more special because the tradition of handcrafting and hand building these engines has not changed over the years. What has changed though is just the precision and the technology that has come along 
over the past few years, for me as well, the last time I was here and now there's a huge difference, though it is nice to be standing right here where uh, the epitome of all of that is happening behind me. That is, of course, the 4-litre bi-turbo V8 that goes into a whole slew of cars, though I have to say the GT family is what makes it truly special. And you saw a glimpse of what that big engine can do in our other big exclusive AMG review just a few days ago, didn't you? The Mercedes-AMG GT S63 4Matic Plus 4-door. A gorgeous car with powerful performance. But we've brought you here before to this plant too. And so I want to jump to the second exclusive of the day. A chance to go into AMG's spanking new engine production line upstairs. Yes, the four cylinders used to be made off-site earlier, but now the new M139 engine gets its own new facility. And yes, you may be forgiven for thinking it's a lab, a sci-fi movie set, or well, just a portal to the future. Quiet and clinical even, this is a far cry from the noisier old-style factory you just saw downstairs, isn't it? Now it is for the first time that AMG's four-cylinder engines are being made right here in Afaltabak. And that's a big deal because this is really the heart of AMG. Now, don't get me wrong, the development of all engines always happened here, but now it's the production as well of the four-cylinder that takes place right here. And it represents a big shift in terms of just the kind of understanding of both the engineering and culmination of technology over the years from AMG and also the direction in which this brand is headed. And so uh, if you take a look, even visually, what we saw downstairs with the V8 production, was pretty much what you would expect, what we've shown you before as well. And this is completely different. The environment is absolutely new and the focus is not on looking great. It's, of course, on increasing the efficiency to make sure that this engine gets the level of precision it needs and yet the entire operation is a lot more precise, a lot more efficient. This new engine is radical in many ways, some of which I already told you. And while it achieves impossible levels of performance, it still remains every bit an AMG power plant. The AMG philosophy of one engine mechanic for one engine in terms of its entire construction, well, that has not changed, of course, even with this new engine. And so you do see the signature of the individual engineer right there on the engine cover. But it's in here that you have huge changes because, of course, what this little engine can do now is quite staggering. This is now the most powerful four-cylinder on the planet and uh, it's been proving its credentials. It will go into, of course, perhaps other engine uh, and model lines as well with this, but for now, you do have uh, the A as well as the CLA family that are getting it. We'll see what happens in the future, but it's the development of this and the uh, facility that you see behind me that kind of represents the big difference in the shift of both the thinking and technology at AMG, the fact that it's now looking into the future with that new approach. So yes, there is no doubt that these people and this facility will one day also look at some form of electrification, most likely in hybrid form, to complement or further boost the already crackling performance of its V8 or i4 engines, at least for the foreseeable future. We will see where that goes, but for now, all the details about this engine have made me want to experience it some more. Of course, this car has no eco or efficiency mode. You knew that. It does get sport, sport plus, and uh, also the race mode. And then, of course, there's the individual setting. What's nice is that you've got this little dial here on the uh, steering wheel now that lets you quickly toggle between the different modes on the fly. You don't have to go down there and start pressing other buttons. 
And then the really nice aspect of this little gadget now or the gimmick is that uh, it's not just a rotary dial. You can also hit on that screen at any time and it straight away takes you into individual mode. So for example, if you're on a highway cruising along and you suddenly want to overtake, instead of having to downshift hard and then try and get into sport mode, you could have already created an individual setting. Quickly hit that, the car instantly knows what you need and then you get that exact performance that you're looking for in a split second. Pretty neat. Now it's got one more trick up its sleeve this car does and that is that when you're in race mode which is strictly for the track you can put the car in manual turn the uh, traction control completely off and then hold on to the paddles for a couple of seconds it'll snap crackle pop and go into drift mode so yes that's a lot of fun I can assure you can't show it to you right now because I am on a public road Well, on the track though, it's a different story. The car is every bit the hot hatch it claims to be and will give a number of bigger, more powerful cars a run for their money. It can slide, drift and yet keep control thanks to its short wheelbase and excellent and precise steering and chassis engineering. Besides the obviously increased amount of power and a quicker response, where the car benefits is really from its structure. And as I said at the start, the AMG team had plenty of inputs, even on the regular A-Class, and so it's just got a more sporty outlook and intent. Add to that the other thing you notice right away, the previous generation A45's 4MATIC or all-wheel drive pretty much worked as a front-wheel system until it sensed the need to send traction to the rear. The new 4MATIC Plus is a wonder by comparison. This one reacts intuitively to inputs it is receiving from all parts of the car. The wheels send up traction and surface info, there's the steering, the yaw and g-force and of course the speed and throttle inputs. The system reacts based on all these parameters to send the right amount of traction to the right wheel. And what's more, while at the front it's a mechanical slip diff that splits power to both wheels, at the rear it's an electronic diff and it can send all the power to just one side if need be. This gives you the same kind of effect and more importantly control as you would have in a car with four wheel steering. Pretty neat and very apparent in the sense of control that you do get even when you push this little tyke really hard on straights and in the corners. Now there's some pretty strict laws here in Germany and the rest of Europe about uh, how noisy and loud a car can be, which means there's a decibel limit you can't cross. So while it would be nicer for the engine to be even louder, what's really nice is that you do get the option as the owner to still enjoy a lot of that because you've got this little exhaust shaped button down here. You hit that button and of course the car starts to sound even racier and uh, even louder but most of that is a microphone in the actual exhaust that's just funneling a lot of that sound back into the cabin so you feel a little good about it even though it doesn't necessarily wake your neighbors up anymore. Yes, I cannot imagine not waking up the neighbors. I mean, that is a part of the reason you would buy this car now, isn't it? And coming to that, while you can argue that the previous third generation A-Class was not a huge success in India, it did bring new benchmarks and a new desire for compact premiums to the Indian market. So while I hope and pray that the fourth generation also gets to us, the question you really have is about the A45, isn't it? Well, the good news is that the AMG version will come, but I do expect it to be the A35. Not quite the car you see here, and that's also because we're likely to get the new A-Class sedan that could potentially replace the hatch altogether, at least for starters. And the same also holds true for the CLA class. In fact, we can tell you that the A-Class sedan will be making its India debut 
sooner than you think. And therefore, we may also get the AMG, like I said, as the A35 sedan. Though secretly, I'll still hope for this hot hatch. And yes, in its sun yellow avatar. Though the 19 inches may not work in India. So that is all the time we have for you on CNB this week. How did you like our massive exclusive with the A45? And yes, remember that little detail. The car being shown to us at the Auto Expo will be the A35, but in its sedan avatar. And so that's the hot news that comes to you. The A-Class comes back to India in the new generation, but most likely as a sedan. Details on that though will only be made available to us at the upcoming Auto Expo. Please do react to this massive exclusive and please wear your seatbelts. I will see you next week with all the Auto Expo action.